Ross, thanks for joining us. I imagine you feel very proud of that display. Extremely. Um, funny how uh, things come around, isn't it? We, we spoke uh, yesterday morning as a group about the fact that we don't uh, grind games out enough. We, don't, uh, we probably don't draw enough games. That's not me saying that we're not going to start sending our team out to, to pick up draws. But I think you need to pick up points on the road when you don't play well or circumstances are against you. Uh, I think the boys done that in an abundance tonight. Some big decisions from the referee, Kevin Johnson. The first, a penalty. Yes, and, and f- I haven't seen it. Um, I've been told it's a penalty. So, yeah, sloppy start by us. It wasn't just that. It was the fact that we miscued a couple of balls down the line and, and put a little bit of pressure on ourselves and then obviously the penalty comes. But um, we've evaded our luck. Uh, there were a number of decisions tonight that would certainly be contested. Would that include the red card for Hector Cipriano? Um, again, haven't seen it back, Dave. I don't like to um, to do so, really. I like to come out here and try to be honest rather than getting all the facts and, and watch everything and, and have that, that clear thing. I'd rather give you my, my opinion on things. It looked as if it was heavy touch. I thought he had a great start to the game, Hector, and uh, it's got away from him. And I've asked the boys to be committed, and he's, he's gone in, he's shown that, and he's, he's got it wrong. And I know Hector Cipriano isn't the type of player to run around trying to hurt people. He's made a mistake and uh, that's what young players do. Connor Wilkinson got the ball in the back of the net. It seemed harsh. Do you remember Crew away last year, Dave? We had a performance there where I thought we were uh, very good. Sam Sargent slipped over and we went um, 1-0 down quite early. Connor scored ahead of that night where he just peeled off the back of the guy and nodded it in the corner. That's what he's done tonight. Uh, yeah, probably the, least, the, the, the best I should answer that one. Down to 10 men and it was the O's creating some of the better chances. Yeah, I would say so. I think we should have had a penalty as well. Uh, I think that, that, that's probably one thing to add to the list for this evening. Um, but yeah, we did. Um, said to the boys that we set up in our shape, not too dissimilar to how we set up most weeks. Obviously, we were defending a little bit a little bit deeper at times than we would like to. But I knew that if, if and when we turned it over, we would manage to cut out the diagonal passes from Crawley. We, we would have the ability to carry the ball up the pitch. Nick Freeman did so. Dan Kemp did so. Connor Wilkinson very much so. And, uh, and, and I think Tristan did at times down this side as well. Morsa Turio looked uh, very sharp early on. What's the extent of his injury? It, it's a hamstring. It doesn't look good. I think he's probably the easiest way for me to describe that. I thought that the guy sort of... I don't, when I say need him, I don't mean that in, as, a, as a bad thing. I thought it looked like a, a dead leg rather than uh, anything else. But Ruel mentioned to me at half-time, he heard something go, and, and that's obviously a real concern. You've been busy in the transfer market, and the new boy's impressed. I thought so. Um, you know, Dan, it's been hard because we haven't played at our very, very best since, since Dan came into the team, uh, and it's been hard for him. But, you know, today his tenacity, his work rate, his energy... He's something that we really wanted to add to the group and I thought he showed that tonight. Nick Freeman's ability to run is like nothing I've ever seen um, and he carried the ball up the pitch excellently tonight. He, looked, he was like Royal Rovers at some stage, jinking and trying to get away from people to carry the ball up the pitch and buy us a little bit of time. So really pleased with that. And for... for um, for whom I listen Adam, Tom, Thompson. Adam Thompson. Sorry, Dave, apologies to Adam. Um, I thought he, he, he marshaled the back four really well. What I really liked about the group is that... We've questioned and talked about our ability to, to dig in, like I said to you right at, the, right at the beginning of the interview. But tonight we showed organisation qualities. We showed the ability to pull people into positions, to, to get ourselves organised on the pitch when someone got pulled out of position. And that's the, that's the level we have to set. That's the uh, mindset, the focus that we need. Because I know that we've got the, the quality footballers. I know that we've got a structure to go out and, and win games of football. It's staying in it when we're not quite at our very best really was a team performance. I was looking at social media. It's, it's so difficult to find a man in the match. Yeah, I'm sure. I wouldn't like to pick one. Maybe Glenn Morris for making the two saves in, uh, from, from our two attacks. But no, I think it would be very, very difficult to do that. I thought, you know, Brove's defended the wide area. Ball's come down this side a hell of a lot. Um, you, you could go on all day. Craig Clay made some, some great tackles in a, in a position where he's been asked to play a little bit deeper. But all the boys that we've already mentioned there as well, you know, Sam getting out there to defend 1v1 and, 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 and all of those things as well. Like, you know, I'm trying to mention them all, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a team performance that we are for it wasn't the circumstances certainly that we asked for but we've um i think we've come away from tonight with a point that no one would have expected an hour or so ago and those players work so hard there's no respite for no. them now is there no it is not um but it's where we're at you know and we hear the phrase of um you know of of players like playing more often than than training and they've got no choice other than to do that at the moment what is a concern obviously is the fact that we've lost lee we've lost ruel 
We've lost um, Danny Johnson to, to injuries, and uh, and that's obviously a, a concern. You know, we we, we you know I, I took a little bit of criticism at the start of the season for trying to protect my players and um, cushion the blow, and that sort of gets forgotten about because of the amount of football and the circumstances that have gone on in in, in League Two this year. Um, and it shows, like I say, if it's when players are exposed and, and, and vulnerable that, that you pick up the, the soft tissue injuries that we have done. How far away is uh, Dan Johnson getting back? I, I don't think he's too far away. We've, we've had him at the training ground today with the other boys that haven't been in the squad working and running. And um, My answer to you at the weekend was let's start seeing how he runs and see how he responds. And, and he's running in the last two days. has been of a positive nature. So if that continues throughout the week, could we see him at the weekend potentially? That's not me trying to be a crafty manager and not give everyone the, the answers. It is literally where we're at. Let's see how, how Dan responds for the rest of this week before, um, before we might see him. Available. It's Colchester next. They've also been busy in the transfer market. Yeah, and I, and I like Steve Ball a lot. He's a really good guy, and I know it's um, been tough for him as late of late. And I know he wanted to add some players at the top end of the pitch because he, he felt that they were performing pretty well and, and missing chances. And I know that he's done that. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough game. I think they all are. The league's been so uh, up and down this year, hasn't it? That you know that whoever you're coming up against, he's, he's uh, capable of, of knocking you off your path. So for, for me tonight, is a positive. It's a point, not free, but it, we have to look at that in a positive context. Finally for me, Ross, obviously the new arrivals are in. What about players whose contracts are up at the end of this campaign? How are the negotiations going? The, the negotiations have gone well. I think, to be brutally honest with everybody, there's been a, cont- a contest from the PFA in terms of uh, the salary cap, and where that leaves players for the remainder of this season. So, rightly so, and understandably so, the players that we've offered contracts to uh, are probably biding their time and waiting to see what that's going to look like because if you can earn a few more quid at the end of the season, I'm sure that's uh, something they're going to be looking into. So, patience is the, is the key. Um, the, the, all the conversations have been really transparent. Martin's made players offers. Uh, I've followed them up with conversations and we know where we stand. Um, obviously, we want to nail players down. We want to know where we are and what we're working towards next season. But we have to we have to tread carefully. I've said all along about players like Josh Wright and, and Jordan Maguire-Drew are seeing Crawley tracksuits tonight. It's a precarious world and we have to be sympathetic towards all of that. So as much as I want my players signed tomorrow, um, we have to be patient and make sure that the circumstances are right for everyone. Good luck with that.